Hi, Dragonflies. When you're working on a painting and you pause to assess how things are going, what's the first question you ask yourself? If you're like most of us, it's usually some version of what's wrong with it or what do I need to fix now? Or sometimes you already feel like you know what you need to fix and you're already on to the question of how do I fix this part that I don't like? And I believe that's a recipe for overworking paintings. So in this art invitation, I'm inviting you to flip that question on its head and instead try asking what's right with it. What do I like about it? What's working really well? What would I like to enhance? And especially, what do I want to be sure not to wreck in the process of fixing or minimizing any distractions from the good stuff? All paintings have flaws, but hopefully if the good stuff is interesting enough or beautiful enough or exciting enough, our viewer will spend their time and attention paying attention to the good stuff and not really notice the flaws. And if there is a flaw that's big enough that it's distracting the viewer from the good stuff that we want them to be looking at, it's a good idea to first remind ourselves what we're trying to preserve or enhance so that we don't wreck that in the process of trying to minimize a distraction. And also to remind ourselves that what we're trying to do is minimize a distraction. Because as you know, if you keep fiddling with something trying to fix it, sometimes you just call more attention to it. If you try this the first time on something that you've just been working on, in many cases, those flaws that are bugging you have a tremendously strong pull, and it's really hard to shift your thinking. So what I suggest you do is flip through some old paintings, maybe ones that aren't horrible, you didn't toss them, but you're not really happy with them, or you're not sure how to finish them, and experiment on one of those. Try to find one where you'll feel like, what have I got to lose? May as well give it a try. This little painting was from the exercise where you draw three colors at random and somehow I managed to draw three purples that were almost the same. So right off the bat, I don't like the color scheme. And because I'm feeling dissatisfied, I also feel pretty critical about some of the other parts of it, like the shoreline on those distant landforms looks kind of wonky and I'm not happy with the way the boat is painted. But if I pause for a moment, I actually do like the pattern of light in the sky and the way it kind of directs you down to the boat. So I'm going to make some adjustments to some of the things that are dissatisfying or distracting to me. And I'm going to start with the one that's bugging me the most, the color scheme. But as I'm doing this, I want to keep in mind that I really do like the pattern of light in the sky that's leading the eye down into the foreground. So I want to make sure I don't wreck that. So this is what I mean by first identifying what's working well. Because actually, if I look at this in grayscale, I actually like it quite a bit better. And now the light in the sky and that pattern of light in the sky stands out to me more. And I'm not really noticing so much some of those other things that were bothering me. And sure enough, once I put some color in the sky, I'm not really concerned about any of the things I thought I needed to fix in the foreground. In fact, the only changes I wanted to make to the foreground were to add a few bluish ripples and that was not because I felt the water needed fixing, but to echo the bluish colors in the sky. So I'm trying to enhance the good stuff. Now, I did lose some of the contrast in the sky, but that was a deliberate choice, not an accident. I tried leaving the lightest clouds white for as long as I possibly could until I was sure that I really wanted them that golden tone. And to get the contrast back, I'll need to restate some of the darker clouds, but this is all wet right now, so I have to wait to do that. But this caused me to work on very different parts of the painting and make very different decisions than if I had started by trying to fix the distant landforms and the shapes of the boat. It's not that they magically got better by glazing some gold tones over them. It's just that now I don't find that that's distracting. And in fact, it probably never was. I was just dissatisfied and looking for things to pick on. For those of us working in watercolor, sometimes when you pause to assess what's working is 
all the places where you didn't overwork already, you didn't lose all the lights. So what do you do if you've already overworked something, lost a lot of the light? In this little field sketch, the part that's working right now for me the best is the light in the water in the distance. And I do like the way the light in the sky kind of leads your eye in that direction. And there is some light in the water in the foreground that leads you back to that distant light, but it's sort of a straight line, almost a little triangle at the bottom. So I'd like to start by enhancing that path in the foreground water that leads you to the distant light by making it just a little more interesting so it's not so much of an arrowhead and it's got a little bit more of a meandering shape. So I could try doing a little lifting, but my sense is that's going to be a little too soft and maybe not light enough. And I want to keep a little of that suggestion of sparkle that's in the water right now. So I'm going to bring in some opaque white paint. I have a tube of white gouache. You can use white watercolor. You could use white acrylic. It doesn't really matter. And if you need to bring in a different light color, say maybe you wish you would have kept some light pink somewhere, you can just tint it with the rest of your watercolors. So one tube of white will do this for you. Now, if you're a watercolor purist and you don't want white paint in your paintings, you can think of this as a way to do a planning draft to figure out where you want to reserve the whites when you go back and do another version of this painting. So by using this paint in a fairly thick consistency, I can make kind of a ragged brush stroke and keep some of that feeling of turbulent water. And I like it much better now. Okay, but what if you have something that you've already kind of overworked to death? It doesn't really show up on the video, but the paper in this painting is really beat up. The washes look really dull and lifeless. For this painting, when I ask myself, what's working well? What do I like about it? What would I like to preserve and enhance? The answer is pretty much nothing. So then what? Well, first, I want to take a deep breath and ask myself, is that really true? There is something that's keeping me working on this painting, trying to fix it. What is that? Well, it's the actual scene I was trying to represent, what I liked about that scene. So maybe that's the thing that I'm going to try to preserve and enhance. Now, one way to approach that is just to start another draft. But I'm actually not sure what it was that drew me to this scene anyway, and I think why I'm overworking it is I'm trying to figure that out on this piece of paper. If I go back in time to before I fiddled it to death, it's actually not a bad little sketch, but it doesn't really have a strong focal area, and I think that's what got me going on mindlessly overworking all the different parts of it. Essentially going back and forth and not being clear about what thing I was trying to have be the star of the show and what was just supporting cast. So I let lots of different pieces audition and in the process I made a mess. So it's good to realize that fiddling around with the bits and pieces of this painting isn't going to work because I haven't made a decision about what I want the focal area to be but now I'm frustrated and kind of discouraged, and I really don't feel like thinking hard about that. I just want a little sketch of autumn by the river. It's time for a more drastic approach. I titled this art imitation metamorphosis, and I use that word myself when I'm thinking about it, because I want to keep open the possibility that I won't just be making a few little adjustments around the edges. In this case, just like the caterpillar has to let go of being a caterpillar to become a butterfly, I want to let go of whatever's happening on this page, take a deep breath, and kind of take a different approach to this painting and see if that opens up some ideas. So I'm going to pull out my little baggie of cool sections of paintings that didn't work out. Sometimes when I have a painting that I'm going to trash, there's a little piece of it that's kind of cool and I want to save it. So I'm going to use that and just do some collage and see what happens. 
Now, please don't message me and say, would you please teach us how to do that collage stuff? Because I almost never do collage. I know almost zero about it. But the point of doing collage for me is that it's kind of unfamiliar. I don't have a routine. And there is really no way I can fiddle with the details because I just don't have the patience to cut little tiny things out of paper and glue them down. So it kind of forces me to think about just big shapes and colors and how I want to place them instead of fussing and fiddling with technique. And it was really illuminating for me. I actually kind of like this little collage, even though I ran out of the gray that I wanted for the foreground and had to pull something that doesn't quite fit. I still liked it enough to trim up the edges and glue it down on another sheet of paper and give it nice little white borders and stick it up in my studio as a reminder to myself that it really is true <laughs> that it's the big shapes that make the design and not all those fussy little details. If you don't happen to have interesting bits of paintings that you've saved in a little baggie to tear from, you can use construction paper, origami paper, wrapping paper, anything that you can find to do this. Or pull out what you do have in your studio. Pastels, acrylics, colored pencils, watercolor pencils, crayons. If you were going to toss that painting, what have you got to lose? There's that one little piece in the foreground that's a little distracting because I tore it from a different painting and it doesn't quite fit color-wise, but I could easily adjust that and minimize the distraction by pulling out my acrylics and putting in some of the grays that came from the original painting. But overall, to me, this really represents the feeling that I wanted to have much more than the field sketch and certainly more than the overworked version that I fussed and fiddled with. So whether I take this as a completed painting or as a brainstorming sketch for myself, I've made progress that I wouldn't have made if I hadn't allowed this painting to undergo a metamorphosis. So I invite you to give it a try. Take some paintings that maybe you're about to toss and experiment with them and ask yourself, what's working? What do I like about it? What would I like to keep and enhance? And make your decisions based on that instead of just what's wrong with it? What do I need to fix up? And if you need to, Allow it to undergo a metamorphosis. What have you got to lose? You were going to toss that painting anyway. So I hope you have fun with it. I hope you learn some things about what you do and don't like about your art and maybe about why you do fuss and fiddle with things and how to get around doing that and stop overworking things quite so much. We all do it, but maybe this will help a little bit. See you next time. Happy painting.